you say to see it. We are going to resolve what your jobs are in my first question, so no worries about that. <laughs> I think everybody here, you know, is broadly familiar with ZDF. Um, but what do you two specifically work with, if we begin with that? Simon, why, why don't you start? Pardon me? What, what? what do you specifically work with? What is your your part of the ZDF oh, machine. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Well, uh, uh, my part or the part of my department is called international fiction. That means acquisition as well as international co-production. It means series as well as feature films and that for all the entities of, of ZDF. We are basically focusing on our main channel where we have two slots on Sunday and on Monday night and ZDF Neo, that's a channel that targets a younger audience between 25 and 50, but we also uh, do international co-productions, for instance, uh, as feature films for art house feature films for uh, uh, Arte uh, or uh, from time to time also for Dreisat, that's a cultural channel together with the Swiss and the Austrian, um, and we also have a small entity uh, doing uh, cinematographic documentaries. So for producers, all of this sounds very delicious, basically. <laughs> and what about you, Frank? What do you do? Um, I'm strictly uh, focusing on co-productions um, and, the, and the team of uh, Simon, uh, overseeing the, the whole um, development slate um, and yeah, being also part of the European Alliance, we maybe uh, touch that later, and uh, also some strategy stuff internally. Very good. So, would you guys say, is there a specific ZDF flavor of drama? And if there is, what is that like? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, maybe it's we are we are really looking <coughs> and we are commissioning premium content. That would be uh, one overall uh, specific. Uh, item, uh, but but on the other hand, as you may have seen, bec uh, uh, because the the, uh, the the channels and the different uh, genre I mentioned, uh, it's it's really a wide scope, and so we are looking to projects uh, in a sense. How do they fit to the slot logic uh, and to the channels? And that's uh, so there is no over. Uh, than uh, except, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, the quality of storytelling and the, the production value mm -hmm. we are looking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, ZDF is uh, offering the audience, not only in the main channel, but with all channels, hundreds of hours of, mm -hmm. of fiction content. So in the field of co-production, oh, we have at the moment, we have 60 uh, co-productions running and in, in, in different stages. So um, they're, they're they're um, uh, shaped by, by the slot or by the audience or by both. That's, that's uh, maybe the yeah, main point from our mm. perspective. Maybe it's the time to see, we could look at the clip. Would you like ah, to introduce yes, it? Okay. Just to yeah. give you a glance ah, of yeah. what right. we are talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. let's do it. Please. Oh, no, thank you very much. The more times I see it, the more I recognize it. Oh, it's that movie, it's that, yeah. it's that series. Uh, it's, it's, if we think about, I mean, now that TV and film are in some ways the exact same industry, on, certainly on the production side they are, we could think that the, the craft of filmmaking, which of course you're highlighting also in, in your clip, it can go from the most experimental art house film to the very most like, manipulatively commercial Hollywood blockbuster, if that's the scale. Where would you say European TV drama is on that scale? Is it in the middle? Is it towards the broader audience? Is it towards the art house? Well, I'd say mainly it's, it's more in the middle. But I, I have the feeling that especially in Europe, it's very much influenced by, by the art house. There's a great knowledge and a lot of uh, uh, directors and authors come from the art house uh, cinema and that has a very distinct impact on the quality of the, uh, the productions uh, we, are, uh, we are commissioning. Uh, and I think that's a, uh, that's a typical European uh, 
uh, way of, of treating uh, projects uh, uh, and it stands for, for, for a certain quality. And as you may have seen in, in this short trailer as well, there is definitely a great link uh, to the Scandinavians uh, to be... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the beginning of international co-production uh, for ZDF was in fact uh, to go together with the Scandinavians. So Scandi Noir is, is uh, directly linked uh, to uh, ZDF's international co-production uh, series. We have been co-producers, for instance, uh, in The Bridge or The Killing uh, and, and projects like that. So um, uh, that, is, uh, that is a tremendous part of our network uh, with regard to uh, the broadcasters as well as to the production companies. And just to comment mm -hmm. on, that, on that relationship, that that's the separates us from the, th from the global entertainment business in, in a way. Uh, production value-wise, I think there, there are a lot of things driven by the budget that we achieve these days that are, that are on the same level. But regarding the, uh, how much it is crowned, how much it uh, takes care of the social issues and the realities in the, in the societies in Western Europe, that's something that is very special, you know, sitting here in this, in this uh, surrounding and what, what uh, the German audience especially uh, loves about that. You know, that's, that's really uh, more specific than, than anything that comes from the States, for example, to, to, to our audience. And I mean, I guess it's, it, it, it just strikes me as we're talking about this, that of course part of that is that for both on the film side and the television side in Europe, so much of our, of our budgets are also publicly funded. And, yes. and that, that money comes with the charter, with, yes. the, with the explicit task yes. of addressing those issues and, uh, and representing Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so in the, this changing uh, streaming landscape, uh, of course, all of broadcast <coughs> television also is becoming technically streaming in, in many ways and very rapidly. Um, how has the focus and the goals of, of, of your organization changed? Well, I mean, the goal is still the same, uh, to as address as much people in our country as possible with relevant uh, content. Uh, but uh, we, we have to, to, to consider that we on the one hand, had to restructure uh, in-house in a, in a certain way. For instance, in my department was, um, uh, was uh, sliced into different editorial units uh, responsible for different channels uh, till uh, last year. Uh, and when I took over, I, I said, we have to change that. We have to, uh, we need uh, editorial units that focus on uh, on co-productions on the one hand and on acquisition on the other hand but do it for all the entities of uh, ZDF because there is the uh, is the biggest um, um, synergy uh, synergies uh, can be built um, and that's a structure we uh, we have in in the other departments uh, in our in our company uh, as well so that's that's an in-house restructuring that uh, uh, reflects the changes uh, in the market uh, very much and concerning uh, the the programs uh, we are doing uh, um, yeah, I mean, serialized content, for instance, uh, became a great issue. Uh, the the audience uh, switches more and more from linear viewing to non-linear viewing. That has a big impact on storytelling, um, on also on topics. Um, one reaction to that was uh, 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 bringing up ZDF Neo as a channel that targets a younger audience and meanwhile they really go online first um, and they have a very let's say open program schedule in their uh, in the linear world um, uh, while ZDF as a main channel 
addresses the regular linear mm. audience first. And uh, there we made, for instance, uh, to give a concrete example, the experience with our Sunday series slot, that if we offer serialized contents, the, uh, the acceptance in our media player is very good, but the linear audience is not able to stand from week to week uh, to follow a serialized series. So if we do so, we have to schedule it eventish, but uh, we, uh, it also means that we return more and more to the procedurals uh, on that slot. And uh, we have a lot of talks to our colleagues from the public broadcasters as well as uh, to, uh, from the commercial broadcasters. And I have the impression it's not only us who <laughs> have uh, these experiences. That's fascinating. So procedurals are making a comeback yes. in linear. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. You, you mentioned, that, I mean, I, I understand why storytelling changes in serial, con in binge serial content, basically. But you mentioned the topics also change. What mm. kinds of, of, of themes or topics drive uh, linear viewing or, or non-linear viewing, sorry? Yeah. I, I would start it a little bit more in yeah. general. You know, over a decade, uh, co-production has been there, especially a Scandi Noir, but it's been Niche is a, is a, is a too, too small word, but it's been, you know, like uh, addressing a special audience. Uh, and what, what we learned and what was possible over the last few years, actually, that we've been scaling that, that uh, mechanism of co-production into different fields. Bigger, uh, smaller, uh, younger, uh, whatever, you know, tripling uh, really the amount of our, of our shows and, and the budgets and the, uh, the, the audiences uh, we've been addressing. So that's not the one topic coming in. Um, it's if, if we, with the NEO we're addressing um, uh, audience between 20 to 40 and, and trying to, to fit into their state of mind, so to say. Um, if you are addressing on the Sundays uh, the, the broad audience, then crime, investigative crime is, 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 is the main thing. It has to be grounded, so that, that, that's it. If you go into eventish stuff, then it has to have the one topic uh, or the one big brand behind it. So that's, that's like a, a single uh, eventish thing then, so trying to, to, to scale it there. Um, <coughs> we heard Guy Bisson say this morning that Germany is an underweight production market, meaning that relative that that there would be a hunger, especially on the streaming services, for more local content than they are getting. Is would you say that that this is because you're already making all the local content and it's mm -hmm. great, so Netflix <laughs> can't have it, or or is there it's it more a complex image? Is there more space for production in your market, and will you grow? That's, uh, I, I, first of all, we have the privilege to be the market leader. So yeah. that helps yeah. a lot. Yeah. I mean, so, so it's... Uh, or we, or, or, so we're not underway. Yeah, no, sorry about <laughs> and, sorry. If, and if yeah. we got the best content and yeah. ARG got the second best content, yeah. then we are open-minded. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we are really lucky by our structure because we are centralized. Mm -hmm. So with the main channel, we are leading the market. ZF Neo is number seven mm -hmm. in the market. And our online player, mm -hmm. now around for 15 years, is also doing really well. Mm -hmm. So we, we are, uh, you know, we, we have a very nice balance in the audiences, uh, all over with the, also uh, with the help of domestic fiction, news, and uh, sports. So it's mm -hmm. uh, children channel. So we, we are very broad in that sense. But I mean, I, I think your question also reflects in a way that the German market is very fragmented, That's true. and uh, it, uh, it's also interesting if you if you look back to the uh, to the 90s or the uh, or even the 80s when uh, when the commercial broadcasters first entered the market, uh, we <coughs> have a great tradition uh, on the public side with quite a number of offers and then again on the uh, commercial side also with a tremendous number of offers uh, that are for free and so uh, and the balance between the commercials and the public broadcasters is also in my opinion uh, a good balance because uh, the um, the public broadcasters are in a way the um, 
the benchmark uh, also for the commercials concerning relevance and quality mm -hmm. uh, and and that's the reason why in my opinion why the commercial broadcasters in Germany still have uh, a certain quality they do not have in in other countries mm. uh, and that's the reason why Germany is really a very, very tough market for additional offers, because what else, please, can they offer as a USP mm. which doesn't exist in the German market? Um, so, of course, everyone in this room would like mm. very much to offer some things to the German market, I think. So, so mm. I must ask, we've mentioned a couple of times the, what we perhaps in politics would call a special relationship mm. between, uh, between the Nordic market and the German market mm. historically. Is there still a space for a special relationship or are we just now one region like everybody else? Okay. No, 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 no. No, not at all. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big brush. I mean, it's, we, we, we have so many shows within this within this room and and they're returning or you know we have so much partnership and trustful partnership here and it's still i would say in our slate it's 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 it's, it's not the majority but it's big for sure we are also looking we, we started to to look into spanish shows and and got involved in italy and so on but uh scandinavian is, and it's not only because of the good relationships within the work uh, but it's also uh, our audience our, our, uh, our um, uh, public interest of our audience is so much, you know, looking into the north, and for a very simple reason, because you, you are for you are some years ahead in, in, in many aspects. So, and, and that, that's that's interesting for for being in the media entertainment. When you say some years ahead, do you mean in sort of societal trends right, or, yeah, or digital, uh, technical, environmental? So, mm -hmm. in many senses. Yeah. yeah. Also concerning social uh, policy, concerning role models. Yeah, I mean, gender. for instance, the uh, those broken characters in the series. That was something that was invented by Scandinavian authors, uh, and that was very, very successful. Uh, and and also, I mean, the role of women in society. Uh, <laughs> Germany is always looking to the Scandinavian countries and say they are they are ahead of us. That's positive role models, uh, and that's that's also very very interesting for us in in our series and our feature films. So let's get a little bit specific. What are you looking for right now? What are you looking for? Perhaps if if there's something that's specific you're looking for from the Nordics, mm -hmm. as opposed to the rest of the world, or what are you looking for in general? If that's a if that's a more easier question yeah, to answer. I mean, <laughs> a, a crime is the in the in the a crime shows for Sunday. That's that's the ongoing engine, and it, you know, uh, Beck, for example, is, is, has been shaping this slot for years, and that, that's something that has to stay there. And we are we are combining uh, different other uh, crime shows with that. Uh, ZDF Neo was more, you know, uh, addressing the the a younger audience with the more an Netflix appeal, so to say. And uh, but b b as I mentioned earlier, it, we we learned uh, how to scale the co-production, so we're also able not not on a daily base not on a weekly base but also to to go into the the field of eventish stuff and still there's also the feature film uh, you know also part of our department and that's uh, feature film is m more more alive and kicking than ever and uh, as you can see what is also now the streaming uh, streamers looking into that and and um, that's also still there and Im very important is there a difference uh, for what you're looking for for co-production? And I mean, are you also looking for acquisitions? And is it very different profiles in the, between no, those? No, no, because the profile is the, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the definition of the profile is linked to the uh, to the schedule or to the uh, to, to the, to the yeah. channel. So I mean, uh, maybe uh, an, an overall uh, um, is uh, is that we are. Uh, uh, that we are more looking for that crime thriller engine, uh, uh, as well as for ZDF Neo, as for the uh, uh, Sunday slot, as for the feature films. But 
with differences. So that means, for instance, for our feature films, uh, that's what I, I call the Hollywood slot. That's the Bourne and Bond uh, slot. There we are looking for really great actors, high production value, and it's, uh, it's thriller action driven. Um, the Sunday slot, that's more, let's say, inspector crime. Uh, it mustn't be an inspector, but it has to be a real crime and in an ideal world it has also to have a happy ending <laughs> because <laughs> the crime has been solved. Um, and for ZDF Neo we also use that crime thriller engine but we combine that genre with subgenres as drama, as dramedy, as uh, sci-fi, as uh, fantasy or, or, or things like mm. that. It's, it's actually funny because you, it's not a small challenge you're setting with that Sunday slot. You're saying we would like something that is more procedural so mm. that it can be watched independently. But of course, it still needs to have, some, probably, to, f to work later on in its, life, in its lifespan, to work in, as library content, mm -hmm. it probably needs to also have more arcs, for instance, and, and things like this. So it's an interesting puzzle for someone to solve. It has to be yeah. deeper and you know, not, not superficial, for sure. Mm. Yeah. Maybe there's one, one genre we, we, we were interested in, do not have it in our in our slate. That's true crime. We are since a while looking for something that is that is uh, um, you know taking care of that. Um, uh, and and then in the end, it's you know we we know what we will air the next two years, but we try to be open to all trends, uh, uh, you know, and the simulation in the market and and to mm. to deal with that, but not with any redundant things. So we try as as everybody to or a lot of people to have something original there. Yeah. And still, the the publishing uh, market, you know, the the book market is very important for us. If there's anything, any big brand, and that's again interesting that the Scandinavian uh, authors have a very strong uh, uh, success in the, in, the, in the German book market, uh, publishing-wise. Yeah. And maybe we should also mention uh, the, what we call event programs, because that's something really very different, uh, uh, budget-wise, but also uh, uh, topic-wise. Um, uh, these are productions that, uh, that <coughs> may be something like uh, what we are right now doing uh, uh, as the European Alliance with uh, Jules Verne's uh, In 80 Days Around the World as a Christmas program. Um, but uh, this can also be uh, uh, different, uh, uh, different programs that all, uh, social policy topics uh, concerning environment or whatever else. Uh, but uh, that uh, programs need a different way of programming. For instance, we made very good experiences with the boat in the beginning of January. Uh, we, we aired it, it has uh, eight episodes, and we aired two of the episodes on Friday night uh, at 8.15, and uh, then three days on, uh, in, on second prime time, uh, 10.15. Mm. And, and, and and that's a way of uh, really give uh, a program also uh, an impact to the audience uh, uh, to, to, to keep on uh, watching, uh, which is needed because those event uh, programs normally have to be serialized to go into the depth uh, the content needs. Now, you already mentioned the Alliance in passing. Uh, I think we've all heard about it, but can you say a little bit about the strategic role of the Alliance and perhaps what's, uh, what's on, on, on the slate going forward? It started two years ago. Yeah. Um, uh, we're, it's, it's between uh, RAI, uh, France Television, and us, and we are like a little club. We are only seven people meeting <laughs> on uh, you know, all two months. And, um, and uh, the, the, the benefit is that we, we, we try to be uh, uh, fast and in sync uh, regarding these, uh, th that's where it started, the eventish um, programs on, on a certain uh, level of, of budget needed for that. And uh, what we learned very quickly uh, in, this, in this process and this, in this steady contact, and there was not really a contact in, in, in the years before there on the, on the between us three channels, that. Um, uh, we are also able to, to go into serialized smaller uh, shows together. So, uh, we, luckily, we've been in the in the first year. I think we've been commissioning like 
five-ish almost or something, or starting to do that. Uh, we will uh, air now the in uh, in two months the, the first show will be aired. Uh, um, Mirage, it's called uh, French jam co-production. Uh, later in the Christmas season, there will be um, 80 days around the world. What is very interesting about that one is that we are entering the family entertainment there. You know, mm -hmm. with co-production, that's really that's really stunning. So it's for us, it's uh, uh, not the only, but w a very good answer to to the needs of the of the market and how to how to bring quick the the budget together and to and is it just yeah. between the three of you or yeah. or is there is yeah. there space for additional there, there <coughs> is space for additional but it's really it's the club yeah and uh, and it, for the sim simple reason that we found out that uh, the needs of all of us are in a way similar but on the other hand very different and it needs to find out what are the basic needs of the channels and how can they uh, be be linked together and I mean it, one one outcoming of talking so intense and uh, so often was for instance that we started with the ideal of doing those big expensive event programs together and talking about about those projects, we found out that not only ZDF with ZDF Neo and also with our uh, uh, only non-linear uh, offer Funk for the very young uh, adults uh, uh, are on the market, but that the French started to uh, uh, bring up a digital channel as well, and uh, the Italians too. And so we, uh, we also started to look for content for this younger audience, yeah. what we didn't expect in advance. So I think it's, it's really very helpful that it's only the three of us to create also a clear signal in the market uh, 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 what what we are looking for but on the other hand uh, we are we are really very tightly linked to the Nordic 12 um, due to the fact that uh, ZDF has uh, these bonds and and uh, the others appreciate it as well they have bonds mm -hmm. too, for instance, to uh, to uh, th to the Spanish market, um, and uh, uh, that's the reason why we decided to act as godfathers or godmothers in the European alliance. To give you an example, if uh, if my colleague uh, Anna from SVT has a project, uh, she thinks that could fit to the uh, European alliance. She comes to me or to Frank and says, "What do you think? Is it a project for the European alliance? Would you like to bring it into it?" And then we would discuss it there. And if so, we would be the uh, the one who would be the link to the producer mm. and to Anna. With with regard to the uh, to the other two, in a yeah. way, it's funny that just in the last few years, the networks learned to network. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really like it's not been yeah. happening before. I yeah. uh, just saying. Speaking about cultural change, when I was a child in Finland in the 80s, for some reason, for many, some years, they would schedule the German crime and the British crime against each other. Mm -hmm. So all the families split, you know, you, you were, and of course you only had one TV set, so you were either, uh, you know, either you watched Der Alte or you yeah. watched Inspector Morse, but it yeah. wasn't too. And my family unfortunately skewed British, which means that I, I didn't watch a German show uh -huh. until like the last five years. Mm -hmm. It has completely changed my view. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, about this country. I, I studied German, mm -hmm. you know, but my, my relationship to your culture has completely changed just from <laughs> interacting with it like yeah. this now. And I wonder, what has it meant for you? It, like, this is possibly our last question because we're running out of time, but what has it meant for you to be working in this industry when suddenly you do have potentially a global audience, certainly an international audience? Well, no, no it's, 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 it's an interesting question. I mean, uh, I, I, I was I was head of ZDF Neo before I took over the department for international fiction, and uh, what what was a, a driving impact for us was that we had the feeling that our audience became more and more. Um, uh, um, 
polyglot, ähm, ja, multilingual, äh, yeah. 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 multilingual, Informed. multicultural, uh, and and uh, with eyes wide open, and uh, uh, and that makes it uh, very easy and also very authentic to tell stories where people work together, meet each other, live in other cities, uh, but but uh, uh, but are linked and. Uh, I, I think it's it's very helpful uh, with respect to the storytelling, but it's also very important from a political point of view. Mm. Uh, I, I, in my feeling, Europe is so important, and and uh, having the same uh, the same uh, uh, aims and and uh, the same visions and uh, is is so important, uh, and that means we have to to talk to each other we have to understand each other and uh, we have to live together and and i think it's an opportunity for us what about you frank i'm yeah i i have a background in feature film and then came you know from a more snobbish side <laughs> to, to the business and i was always a, a little bit afraid of uh, entering the or not afraid i did not want to enter the tv world and then, then when it happened, <laughs> because for, for uh, some reasons, whatever, that, and, and now being in a, in a, in a role, and, 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 and uh, I'm very thankful that we, we can talk about quality all the time. It's never, you will never stop a discussion uh, as, as long as you're talking about the quality of the, of the content. And that's, that's fantastic. That's, that's really great about these times. It's not always been that way in the TV business, as we all know. And nowadays we can, you know, we, you will never, yes, as I said, stop by, by, by that discussion. That's wonderful. Before we thank you, I'm going to give the audience two sentences of practical information. The next thing on the program will be a break, after which we will gather here again for a panel about the European style of production. Simone Melius will return for that, and that's uh, at on the hour. And for now, please give a big hand to Frank Sebert and Dr. Simone Melius. Thank you.